Hi guys, welcome back to Minty, and today we're going to look at the characteristics of living organisms. And remember that these videos are based on the CSEC biology syllabus. Let's get straight into it. So remember, living things are alive and must perform certain activities to remain alive. These include movement, respiration, nutrition, sensitivity, reproduction, growth, and excretion. So we're going to look at a memory card to help us remember the different characteristics of living things. So this will be in the form of a story time. So one day, a couple decided to arrange ballet lessons for their young daughter every week in the living room. The ballet teacher they appointed was Mrs. Gren. She taught the girl to move, movement, correctly as a ballet dancer. At the end of the first few lessons, the girl was completely exhausted and crawling and breathing heavily. Respiration. They soon found that a few breaks for nutrition Milk and cookies during each lesson solved the problem of her becoming exhausted. But as each lesson lasted four hours, she found she often had blisters and her feet were rather sensitive. Sensitivity. However, with time, the blisters went away. Her mom and dad had several more children reproduction, all boys, as time went on, but she was the only one who did ballet in the living room. Her brothers were only interested in playing football. As she grew up, growth, the girl continued her ballet lessons with Mrs. Gren and became good enough to perform her first ballet recital. But at the start of the performance, with the capacity crowd waiting, she could not be found. Ooh oh, excretion. So this was just a memory card for you guys to remember the various characteristics of living things. Movement, respiration, nutrition, sensitivity, reproduction, growth, and excretion. You can also remember using Mrs. Gren, who was a ballet teacher. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. So the first characteristics we're going to start with is movement. And we're going to use plants and animals to demonstrate movement. So carnivorous plants, which are plants that can eat animals, move to trap insects. This is actually called the Venus flytrap. Some plants close at night to prevent chilling injury. So because of the cold temperatures that can occur at night, you find that some flowers are able to accommodate and close their leaves to prevent the extreme cold temperatures from affecting plant growth. Also, stomata in leaves open and close to regulate water loss. Some flowers can actually turn their heads to follow the sun and this allows for them to have efficient photosynthesis. And as you all know, animals have free movement. As you can see, with well, these cute puppies running in the snow and these fishes swimming about in the tank. So respiration is quite similar in plants and animals. They both have cells that respire to produce energy. In plants, the oxygen is, is absorbed and carbon dioxide is released slowly via tiny holes or stomata in the leaves, as you can see here. In animals, oxygen from the air is breathed in or inhaled via the lungs and carbon dioxide is breathed out 
or exhaled. Sensitivity. Plants can actually move slowly in a direction of light, as you can see in this illustration. The green plant is actually bending towards light or to the sunlight, and this is in order for them to get as much sun as possible for photosynthesis to occur at its maximum potential. Plants are also sensitive to gravity, enabling them to always send roots downwards and green shoots upwards. Plants can respond to temperature changes in many ways, as we started to explain. Exposure to heat, for example, can cause the stomata to open and allow water inside leaves to evaporate, so cooling the plant. So remember, water to vapor is evaporation, and with evaporation causes cooling. Just like if you were to sweat and then the sweat started to evaporate, you realize that you start to feel cooler after. Plants can also be sensitive to touch, and one way in which they demonstrate this is actually when some plants wrap their stems around trellises, as you can see. Animals have specialized sensory cells and special sense organs. The eyes respond to light and they provide vision. The ears respond to sound to provide hearing. Nerve endings in the skin provide the sense of touch that allows us to feel temperature and pain, light touch, a heavier touch. Taste buds in our tongues and other parts of the mouth give us a keen sense of taste. And millions of neurons on a strip of tissue called the olfactory in the back of the nose gives many animals that acute sense of smell. Growth. So plants tend to grow by increasing in the number of cells and also the size of the cells. This is similar in animals, except that the cells tend to grow to a maximum size and stop. That's why when you grow from toddler till you reach adult, at some point your height starts to level off and you no longer get any taller. Reproduction. Plants, specifically flowering plants, make seeds that grow into new plants. And non-flowering plants make new plants from spores. Some plants actually reproduce asexually, for example, strawberries. In animals, they may either lay eggs or give birth to live babies. So the hen will lay eggs, while in humans, for example, birth is given to a live baby. So excretion, which is a process of removing waste products, can be achieved in both plants and animals. Plants will release excess oxygen when photosynthesizing or carbon dioxide when respiring. Other waste that is stored in leaves is released when the leaves die and fall off. In excretion in animals, that's done via sweat glands, breathing out carbon dioxide, elimination of feces, and elimination of urine. Nutrition, which is the taking in of nutrients from food to provide energy, growth, maintenance of tissue, regulation of the organism's structure or body. So in plants, plants absorb mineral nutrients from the soil via their fruits up to their stems and leaves. The leaves contain green pigment chlorophyll that makes glucose from the sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and this is known as photosynthesis. Now in animals, animals eat plants and or other animals for food. The digestive system is what breaks down the food into glucose, fatty acids, glycerols, and amino acids, which is the simple forms of the food.
And that's it for all the characteristics of living things. I hope you guys liked this lesson and don't forget to comment if you have any questions. Like this video if you found it helpful. Share with a friend and subscribe to Mint Tea for more videos. Bye!